Canada! The world's second largest country by land area, with the longest land border in the world. It may be near the US, but the two countries are hardly the same. Canada aggressively calls for immigrants and foreign students. 21.9% of the population are immigrants. With strong programs in snow studies, maple syrup engineering, hockey management, and politeness, Canada gives students great learning experiences in a safe and secure environment, albeit a cold one. I promise that's the end of the Canada jokes. We love you, Canada. My name's Meacham, and today SCORE is going to show you how to study in Canada. Since Canadians are super polite and super nice, I thought it would be a good idea to actually ask a Canadian for some advice on studying in Canada. So, I reached out to my good buddy Jason to see if he could help us out. You'll have to forgive his internet quality. It's hard to get internet up there. It's very cold. Hey Jason, good to see you. It sure is, eh? Nice to see you there, Andrew. So, you're definitely a Canadian. Can you tell us where you're from? I'm from Edmonton, Alberta, in the West. Cool, so I'm making this video about how to study in Canada, and I was wondering if you had maybe some advice that you could give to our students? Well, sure I do, eh? So, the first thing you gotta know, which is pretty evident from my attire here, is you gotta learn how to play hockey. And you gotta learn to suffer the extreme Canadian winters. What you don't want to do is ask any Canadian off the street, whether he's your teacher or somebody living in your country, what to do to get into Canada. Because guess what? They likely don't work for Canadian Immigration and Services and, 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 and uh, Citizenship. And so they're not going to have a clue what to do, right? Instead, you can visit the website, which is a really great website, clear, big font. Okay, but like immigrating to Canada is super easy, right? I mean, you guys are friendly. You just let everybody in. Well, uh, no, not really. That, you know, maybe because we're super friendly, a lot of people want to come here. So the Canadian immigration services are actually pretty strict. As friendly as we are, you know, we do engage in hockey fights. And sometimes we're a little bit strict on who we allow in our country just for that reason. We want to make sure you want to really get here. You heard the man. If you really want to get into Canada, then you should check out prepwithscore.com so that you can see how we can help you with your applications. We'll check back in with Jason a little bit later to see if he has any other useful advice for us. For now, let's get started with the basics. Most degree programs in Canada take four years to complete. You might find some programs that take three or three and a half years, but these tend to be preparatory programs that set you up for a master's degree for further studies and are usually common in medicine. Canada has 10 provinces, each of which sets their own rules for educational institutions. Ontario has a centralized portal for applications called the Ontario Universities Application Center, but the rest just ask you to apply directly to each university. And unlike the United States, where there are tons of private universities that do whatever they want, most of the universities in Canada are public. Deadlines vary from province to province and from program to program. However, most universities draw the line at February 1st for the majority of their programs. So get moving. Similar to what we talked about in the Netherlands video, some universities have limited space programs that may have their own deadlines. Ultimately, there's no uniform standard for universities in Canada, so you're going to have to do your own research. Or you can check out PrepWithScore.com to see how we can take that tedious, painful part of the process out and make it easier for you. So what are the admission requirements for Canadian universities? Let's go to the prereqs. Canadian universities follow the European model, meaning you'll need 12 years of schooling to get in. Canada's international relations also allow you to automatically qualify with a variety of high school diplomas, including Britain's GCE or GCSE, a US diploma, French baccalaureate diplomas, and even Chinese or Indian diplomas. As always, there's the option of a foundation year or validating university studies from somewhere else to make up for that missing 12th year. 
If you do go for the foundation year in Canada, we would recommend that you try to stay in the same province as where you intend to graduate just to avoid complications. Now, the language situation in Canada is a little weird. So let's go to the language barrier. See, Canada recognizes both English and French as official languages, which means you can technically present documents in either language. Native French speakers can even be exempted from English admission requirements and vice versa. There are programs that are exclusively in French throughout the country, although this is most common in the province of Quebec. I love fishing in Quebec. Who doesn't love fishing in Quebec? French program admissions call for a C1 level on the... Hang on. Score would like to apologize to the entire French community for the following terrible pronunciation. Les diplômes font du lingue français. Uh, we'll just call it the DALF. That, that sounds better. Of course, if you graduated from a French-speaking high school, then you're good to go. For English, universities will typically take Cambridge exams, TOEFL, the IELTS, or even the Duolingo test. If you studied four years in any of the Commonwealth nations, you might be able to skip the English test altogether. Native English speakers should feel right at home in Canada, eh? Native French speakers won't have too much trouble either. Pretty much everything's written in both and they are required by law to provide material in French. Given Canada's high level of immigration, people are generally pretty understanding if you're having a little bit of trouble communicating. So don't worry if your English isn't the best in the world. They're not gonna get mad at you. And besides, they're too polite to do that anyway. So now let's talk about those Canadian dollars. Let's talk finances. Prices at Canadian universities are all over the place. Even within the same university, the prices can vary tremendously. For example, in the University of Toronto, you can get a bachelor's in music for $39,560 a year, while a bachelor's in architectural studies will set you back nearly $20,000 more. Meanwhile, you can study at Mount Royal University in Calgary and spend just over $22,000 a year. Bear in mind that all the numbers we're using are in Canadian dollars, which does bring the price down a little bit. Maybe Jason can tell us a little more about that. You should expect a bit of a higher standard of living. Um, our Canadian dollar is a bit lower than the US dollar. And the reason for that is, which makes sense, is that everything is a bit more expensive. So your food and your groceries, which are a little bit harder to grow and import here and stuff like that, those get a little bit higher. When it comes to scholarships, each university manages their own, but the options are very limited. For example, Ryerson only awards seven scholarships to international students, while University of Toronto's Pearson Scholarship requires a sponsorship from your school. There are additional scholarships that you can get later in your studies depending on where you live. For example, if you're a citizen of the ASEAN, CARICOM, or OAS, you can apply for scholarships that help you finish your studies in Canada. We've left a link in the description for all the different scholarships that you might be able to get for Canada. So you can check those out and see which ones you can apply for. Now, let's move on to talking about your visa. What you want to do is join the Beaver Club of Canada. This is a real thing, I promise. What you can do is you can get a beaver to sponsor you. Now, does everybody know what a beaver is, first of all? It's like a rodent little critter. He's got big teeth and he's got like a big black tail and he builds dams. This is Canada's national an animal. We're very proud of them. If you're gonna study in this country, you gotta be hardworking, like the beaver. Then you're gonna wanna connect with a beaver, have a beaver sponsor you, and as soon as you're sponsored by a beaver, you're in like Flynn, like that. I couldn't actually find a reference to the Beaver Club anywhere, so let's take a look at what we were able to actually find with regards to Canadian visas. In order to get a visa to study in Canada, you need to have an acceptance letter from a designated learning institution. The Canadian government keeps a list of these, which you can find in the description below. Once you have your letter, you can apply for a study permit from the government. There's a $150 fee for the permit. All documents need to be translated into either English or French, 
and you'll need to show that you have enough money to support yourself while in Canada. Residents from some countries will have to get a medical exam before entering Canada, and you must get it done at one of the approved panel physician's offices. Your study permit is good for the entirety of your studies. You'll need this permit before you can enter the country unless you already have a visa or travel authorization. Be aware that right now study permits are taking anywhere from two to five months to process depending on your country. As soon as you're accepted into a university, you should start this process immediately. So that's everything you need to know to study in Canada, unless Jason has any other information for us that would be useful. The moose shall not be eaten. Let me repeat, the moose shall not be eaten. That is a Canadian national anthem. Don't get near the moose, because they will hurt you. They look like pretty animals, but they're huge. Their legs are about as high as a truck. And if there's a calf around, a baby moose, they will they will come after you. you. You heard a lot about bears, I know that. But, you know, watch out for the moose. Seriously, I really do want to say thank you to Jason for taking the time to help us out a little bit and just give us a little bit more insight. He found a really good link to a list of universities in Canada, which we've added to the description as well. We know it's a popular destination for a lot of people, so we wanted to get this one out for you, but if there's a country that we haven't covered yet that you would like us to, please leave a comment below and let us know. If you like the video, please like and subscribe to the channel so that you can keep up with our content. And also don't forget to follow us on Instagram at Prep with Score so that you can keep up on the latest with our classes. We're starting an SAT group as we're speaking right now. Next week we're going to talk about money matters and how you can make paying for university a little bit easier. So stay tuned. I'll see you next time. Let me suggest that the your best route to getting into Canada is to depend on the good people at SCORE because they've done their research. They know what they're talking about. I am but a lowly advisor in this situation. And so put your faith, your faith into the good people at SCORE.